All right, people, welcome back. Harmless Dave here again, talking about real music in real time for a few real people out there, just like you right there and just like me. So Eric Clapton decided to come back. Eric, how are you? Uh, very well, thank you. It's good to see you. Um, yeah, you're you too. getting ready to be fairly active again out there on the road doing concerts, and uh, you're here in the States now resting up which is is good how how have you been feeling lately by the way um i we've had a long uh a long prolonged kind of chest uh condition which happened on the road in europe where i played outdoors in the cold and uh got a kind of bronchial thing which i couldn't shake and everywhere we went the weather's been crazy it's been uh, cold i was looking for the sun anywhere <laughs> and then finally saw that it was okay here uh, in the US, in Columbus, where my wife's family lives. So we came out here early and got the heat wave. There was a heat wave about, and it was like one extreme to the other. So, um, and then I have to have, we have the AC on, which is also <laughs> not good. No. Uh, 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 but right now it's, it's kind of nice. Yeah. So, yeah. You guys up there, see, I'm in the South in Florida and it's hot here Florida. until November. Um, but I hear it's like in the 70s there, which is fantastic. It's very pleasant. Yeah. But it's probably about to get caught. I think it's it's headed towards uh, the yeah. autumn now. So you, your health is getting, you're improving then, right? You're not, Yeah, I'm so. doing all right. Thank you. All right. Pretty Good. Much. Good to hear. I don't know why. I just feel I have to ask you that after you know, all the stuff you went through a few yeah. years ago. And I, well, I just. Well, I'm definitely uh, vulnerable. Yeah. To, you know, can, whether the weather or just crowds or whatever. If there's something going around, I'm always going to be the one to get it. Yeah. All right. Well, strong constitution. Yes. Yes. Well, um, good to know. Um, I wanted to uh, mention one of my patrons here who who asked me again. I've got folks that are always asking me, can you tell Eric I said this? This nice lady, Deb, apparently her name is Deb Krupp, I think. And she said she left something for you. And so she wanted me to mention that. And that apparently you received it. I don't know if you received it here or uh, in the UK, but it was a, a piece of metal artwork. She wanted me to oh, make yes, sure that I yes I mentioned that. Yeah, we hung it. It's it's hanging on the wall somewhere. All right. So now I'm a hero to Deb. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> a funny connection, isn't it? Because I, you know, I get these things. I receive things sometimes, and I'm not sure whether to respond or. What. I mean, it's if it's artwork, you yeah. have to. You have to honor that. You have to respect it. And, yeah. uh, no, she so, well, She sent me a message saying, hey, if you like a lot of people, hey, if you talk to Eric again, tell him tell him this. And I, she seems pretty legit. She's on my yeah. uh, Patreon and she's a nice lady and uh, she's very okay. supportive of the channel. So I wanted to mention her. So you're going to Brazil, uh, Argentina, right? California yeah. and Mexico. Um, yeah, and not in that order. Not in that order. No, I messed it up. I think you're probably going to Argentina first. Argentina, then Brazil, then Mexico, then California. Okay. All right. Any particular reason you chose that route? Um, it's. I, I think it's logistics, really, that um, make that uh, work. We we. But it, it will be interesting to see how it does go because we're going. Argentina will be is south of the equator, mm -hmm. so it'll be cool. Yeah. And I've got to quick make sure that I don't get sick, you know, because no more outdoor gigs for me, I tell you, man. It's so tricky now to predict the weather. But um, then we'll go up to Brazil where it's going to be warm, I'm sure. Yeah. Mexico will be warm. California is all, it's all, it's all good. But there's a couple of outdoor shows near the end of the tour in, in October in LA. So I don't know how the weather will be there. But, yeah. Um, well, it's, so, it sounds good. Sounds like a, a good uh, route to be on. Now, are you bringing the same musicians that you yeah. have been working? Okay. Okay, good. So Except, we'll, be... but, well, we might have a problem with Chris Stainton, which is a good topic of conversation because he was, uh, I think he was busted in the early 70s in Australia with a, a joint. I think they found a joint in his bag. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't right now he can't get a visa to come to america what? 
Because he, of he a got, joint? Everywhere for this, yes, like 50, how long? Is it 50 years? And he gets flagged whenever we go across into Japan, he gets flagged. Here, I'm not he I'm not sure he can come. And he's had a rough time with his health too, because he's a little bit older than me and he's mm. you know, he's a legend. Yeah. I don't like going anywhere without him as a musician. He's he's like part of my brain and uh but he may not be able to come because of this mad, you know, it's crazy. That and is, it's legal. I mean, isn't it legal in some states? Yeah, yeah. I that think make any sense. there's a question a on the ballot here in Florida. I think they're going to try to legalize, you know, recreational. It just, 50 years ago, I mean, can't someone pardon or expunge or do? I mean, and he's the cleanest individual you'll ever meet. I mean, he's a complete health nut. He's very, he's very strong and he's very mm -hmm. principled, but he... He can't get a work home. And so he's, I, I, he, you know, he, even talking about it makes me think, oh, should I be talking about this? Because it'll probably uh, undermine the whole thing. Even yeah, more. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe you should have probably. No, that's me. I open my big mouth and I always put my foot, you know. Well, if somebody's watching, all right, and somebody has any kind of authority to fix this because this yeah. seems a little bit uh, Give us a out, break. outrageous. I mean, we're, we're dealing with uh, musicians here that, 50 years ago, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Eric. I wish I had a good answer. I mean, you know how you know how government works, right? No, I don't. <laughs> it, no. It, it I really don't. It doesn't. <laughs> I'm glad the, to say. I'm the wheels of the business. wheels of justice run backwards, apparently, or something. That's so, right. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, you know, you've been pretty outspoken at, uh, you know, some of the things that are going on in the world today, especially over in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, any, I know you had you had some visual surprises for folks at the last concert, and you obviously you had a pretty uh, positive reaction, if I recall, with your guitar and just the the tone of of what you're trying to, I guess, make a a, a statement, but maybe not. You know, you're not Roger Waters out there. I think you're just trying to uh, send people a gentle message to to get them maybe a little bit uh, interested in what you're trying to say. Uh, I think yeah, my view is that uh, I, my calling is to make music uh, for for, gen for general purposes, for my own satisfaction, and because it's my calling. And mm -hmm. uh, and I, and that and and in this particular situation, it's for peace. You know, I make music sure. to heal or help heal or right. to carry a message of peace. And and. Uh, and I don't see a lot of that being brandished about. I mean, there there aren't that many. I haven't seen many people in this election that you've got that talk about. The only guy that I've heard mention that word is Cornell West. And uh, then I see some other platform guy on a platform saying that he's being used as a spoiler. So now, so I mean, then when it gets that into that complexity i don't i don't know what you know if you were if i was an american voter mm. i don't know what i'd do i'd have to vote for somebody but um and i i think i would vote for him but um but then you find out or maybe it's be he's being manipulated uh to create a bias on one of the other parties it's crazy um there's yeah but, <laughs> and i so well, i'm coming here to play shows and this this time I'm going to be have to be careful because I th I think free speech is being annihilated now, and it could be by the time I get to uh, South America, I'll, I'll have to be very careful what I say because I know Roger got banned from all the hotel; he couldn't get a hotel room. Wow! I, I mean, he, and he is very outspoken. I mean, he's right. got he uh, um he's got written, you know balls of steel. I, I'm not so sure about. Whether or not I'm capable of doing that properly, I mean, I, I I'm in agreement with him on most things, but uh, how I would go about uh, presenting my case is simply through the music, right? Uh, and and hope that that's uh, adequate. Sure, sure. I mean, the last time I think we we spoke, uh, I was kind of floating that idea that you and Roger, you know, you could team up. Maybe you could, um, you know, write a song together. Have you ever thought of doing that with him? Yeah, well, we do, but that but he's he's always in a different. We, he's in UK now, yeah, and I'm here. We we were going to meet up, and now uh, we can't do it because we're separated by the continents. But um, 
Yeah, uh, and is he? He's difficult to get hold of sometimes. He just goes missing, <laughs> uh, and, and I wait for him to contact me or something, you know. But um, I think it's everybody's got to carry their own cross in this, right? Uh, and we all go to it in, a, in different directions. And uh, at the moment, uh, I'm not sure what it's safe to say, uh, uh, and I don't want to undermine my cause before I even get on the plane to go to the. The stage I'm going to play on, so I'll play. I play it by ear generally. Yeah. I see if it feels safe. If it feels safe, then I'll say something, or I'll I'll I'll, I'll lean in a certain direction. But uh, at the moment, I think the whole the whole Western thing is very unstable. Yeah, I mean, in the UK, and I think I sent you a message a while back where I had watched a news report that people were posting things online yeah. about certain people that were they felt were invading their country, right, in the UK, yeah. and it's happening obviously here as well. Uh, and you you were getting, they were putting messages back out like, hey, be careful what you post. And I'm like, George Orwell was underestimating everything. You know, I mean, he was... He was yes. It, it's it's crazy how far things have gone. And you're right when you say that I think free speech is it's almost gone. It, it's I mean, people need to understand that your music is serious. Right. Everybody. I, I talk yeah. about this, but you care about things that go beyond your music. And I think you use the music to try to to reach people. Well, if, the, if they stop the music, we we haven't got a chance. I mean, that's it, it, I have. Uh... I have a condition with alcohol, which I deal with. You know, I can't, I don't drink and I choose mm -hmm. not to drink. So that's, that's not a, a good way for me to uh, find a solution. Mm -hmm. A lot of people probably find a solution all over the place now with prescription medication, what have you. But the truth is still the most important thing. And truth is conveyed through music. That's what I've experienced. So I have to protect that avenue uh, and make sure it's not cut off. If uh, if you get boycotted or you can't play, I mean, those two years when I couldn't play, I felt like uh, there was a real there was real trouble in the world when yeah. when musicians and artists are banned or boycotted or shut down. We all suffer, uh, not just the people that don't can't work, but the people that need to receive that message is very very important this basic human goodwill and uh and, and it's the, the right to express ourselves is so important um mm -hmm. so i need to protect that and and i'm not really good at uh studying or researching the current situation I mean, it changes so rapidly the laws are changing in the uk uh, there is there is a kind of uh, a, a commission that, that watches for hate speech and the, and the interpretation of hate speech is so uh, nebulous that mm -hmm. you, 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 I mean, so there are certain words, I think, geographical words that you won't be able to say soon without having someone knock on the door. Wow. Uh, so that's that, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because um, I don't know if you heard this story with Van Morrison uh, it was in the news that he finally settled that uh, lawsuit that was going back and forth with him and the yes. Minister of Health in Northern Ireland. Uh, just yeah. crazy. It took three years, and it was all based on the fact that Van wanted to play like you. Yeah. He wanted to play shows, and uh, he said a couple of things from the stage. I think he called this guy Robin Swan. He said he was very dangerous. And then uh, our favorite magazine, which I won't mention here, uh, said that Morrison's songs, his anti-lockdown songs, were actually the things that were really dangerous, that uh, Van Morrison was saying that. I mean, I tell you, I never thought I would see th this level of, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like opposite day every day uh, in the world. Yeah. So, but that lawsuit was was thrown out. They both apologized to one another, essentially saying, hey, uh, Van Morrison is a treasure. I mean, they should probably do the same thing for you, Eric, based on what what, <laughs> what you want. I don't, I think I, I'm not looking for any uh, approval from anyone, really. Um, 
uh, and and I'm you know I'm not a, a social person. I I have my I have my family and I have work to do. Other than mm. talking to you or talking to a few other people in the underground, uh, just to I'm keep the up underground. With what's going on. I have my heroes. I, yeah. I have uh, uh, people that I admire, but I w- I wouldn't uh, put them in, in trouble by even mentioning their names. You know, it's like <laughs> it's a game of chess now. Just making. You know, one day at a time, I'm going to get to where I'm supposed to be, and I'll do my best, and I'll and I'll carry on. That's yeah. it. Now, these <clears throat> upcoming shows, any anything different? Uh, music selection going to be different? I know you've got some music in the pipeline. We talked about how you've got yeah. new stuff out there, and I think well, the audience will be interested uh, if you're going to maybe debut a song or two from, uh, I might album. try that. I'm, I mean, I'm practicing, uh, on my own, obviously at the moment. And, uh, when I get to Argentina, we'll try some of these songs and they are, you know, the, the, this, there's an album coming out, uh, in October, which I had to fight to get out because it was going to be pushed back till next year. And, and it's really a collection of the stuff that I've done over the last three, four years that we did, at home, you know, I played the guitar or with a drum, with a, a drum machine or a click. Mm-hmm. Then it got sent to LA where Nathan would play bass and Sonny in Atlanta would play drums and then we'd put some keyboard. And so all and all of this stuff was forced on us by the governments who wouldn't let us play together. And then and I'd just been sitting so I thought, let's get it all out. It's called uh, Meanwhile. Yeah. And and it and it's nice. It's good stuff. It's uh it's a little inhibited because it was all home recorded, mm-hmm. but it, I need to get it out there. So we will probably we'll try some of those songs, but I'm more likely to play stuff that that we know well that the audience expect to hear. Sure, uh, sure. You know, you know, I um I stumbled on this duet with uh, between you and Glenn Campbell the other day. Oh yeah, uh, I hadn't heard that song Uh, it's a jacob dylan song that's right and man do you guys blend well together that was now that was was after glenn had passed away did you add vocals to that yes i did we went in and overdubbed on it and a little bit of guitar too oh i mean did did you ever work with glenn campbell at all when he was uh, he uh, he was um when i was with cream we did the smothers brothers show (laughs) (laughs) wow you remember (laughs) Yes, and, uh, yes. I was a very, musical. I was very, very young. I just want to make clear oh, to the audience. Well, you yes. were alive, though, right? Yes, I was alive for the yeah. Smothers Brothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he was a musical director of that show, I think. Yeah. And we played. I think we played together, and I can't remember what the song was, but he was a hero. Yeah. And he was a hero for me at the end too, when he was touring without a memory. <sighs> yeah. And. uh his wife would go with him and they do interviews and they, they'd say, well, Mr. Campbell, how, how, what made you come here? Why did you come here? And he said, I don't, I don't know. Where are we? I don't know where we are. And, it, and he'd have to be reminded. And, uh, but the minute he started to play and sing, he was on fire. Yeah. I, and, that and was unbelievable. He, unbelievable. Tremendous. Yeah. Now um, he, you would, you would rate him as a, pr- a pretty decent guitarist, right? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's fantastic guitar, but a great man. Yeah, great he, man. He left quite a legacy, and and Wichita Lineman alone, yeah. the Jimmy yeah. Webb song is just it's it's so good. Yeah. Now I mentioned to you, right? If so, if if the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ever gets their act together, right, and they decide to put uh, JJ Kale in, that I I think you should be able to give the induction speech, and and you. You said something to the effect that, you know, don't hold your breath or whatever. I forget what, how you said it, but. Um, well, you know, I, I came I came to that thing, whatever it is. I think of it as a frat boys club, you know, that, uh, that, that happened to lure in. I think the, the fact that they had Armit, you know, was right. the kind of uh, Armit Ertigan was the ticket for me. I think, And they, he obviously thought he was doing it for people like Ruth Brown. Mm-hmm. and the drifters and you know yeah. the, all those early atlantic artists that were being forgotten and then it, you know just kind of started to snowball and and i i was very suspicious because obviously the the magazine was involved and mm-hmm. uh, and 
my dear friend Robbie was also uh, part of the ticket. Uh, I thought, well, he was the one that persuaded me to do it. Yeah. And uh, I did it with Jack and Ginger. And we I remember the day we rehearsed for the show because mm-hmm. we were going to play a song after we'd been inducted. And uh, something happened. And people were were there, you know, the people, the techs that were in the room with us had never seen us play. Uh, we hadn't seen one another for 20 years. And we clicked immediately into the group that we had always had. And uh, and it was magic. And I thought, well, okay, this if this is why we're doing this rock and roll hall, then I'll accept, you know, I'll go with it. But um, the fact that someone like JJ has never even been suggested is... Right. Uh, is proof of uh, what what that thing is, or proof of what it isn't. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm, it's not likely. It's not like he, he'll ever he'll ever come up. Um, oh, that's sad. It's not their thing, you know. I don't know what yeah. their thing is, but he's he's too <laughs> anonymous for those guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know the stories. This you you told me some great stories, and I, I think it's. I don't know. I kind of appreciate the people that are they're a little bit more reclusive and they they don't want the spotlight and they just want the music to kind of speak on its own. Paul Rogers, right, um, yeah. said to Amit at one point, you know, uh, why would you want to do a rock and roll museum? That's the way he he phrased it to him. <laughs> like, what what's that all about? And he said, well, you you could be in it. And he goes, no, I I yeah. think a museum and rock and roll don't go together. So everybody every year it's like. How is Bad Company not in? And you know, Paul They're Rogers not. said years ago, I don't, I don't want to go in. That's what he said. He said, I don't oh, want to okay. be in this. So they should be in, regardless of what Paul says. So he's not in. Paul no. is not in. Paul's not. Paul's it's a rebel. It's a rebel. So many of them aren't in. I it's mean, not a place for rebels. It's you know, it's not a place for rebels. It's no. establishment stuff yeah and now it's not we could do a whole other video See, i can about... talk about it now without hurting it because it, you know robbie's gone arm has gone they're not really gone but they're they you know i'm not gonna hurt anyone's feelings by saying that uh <clears throat> i'm not even gonna no i'm not gonna anything yeah it just it, it's a get together it's a get it's just schmooze right right you know? well like you said there's a certain magazine i think that that kind of took that over a number of years ago yeah. And it it hasn't really recovered from from that point. So let me ask you: Do you um do you have any favorite podcasts? I know you and I were talking about people that you watch, and I just I thought that was yeah. fascinating. People that you you would send me something and say, "Hey, have you have you seen this?" And I get a lot of that stuff from other guys who play music. Will say that who send me stuff all the time. Well, in, in the UK, we got Novara. Yeah, what's it called? Uh, you know Novara? Novara. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and in uh, in the U.S., I would generally look at Democracy Now, mm-hmm. uh, and Glenn Greenwald. Yeah, Glenn's a good reporter. He's yeah. a good good reporter. He's been and he's he kind of he's changed a lot. It you know in the early days he was kind of just on one side, and now he's kind of like he's going after everybody. There's there's yeah. kind of that movement now where you know there's no it's hard to put a label on things the way you could do it before like left versus right. Now it's just kind of right versus wrong, sane versus insane. Um, but so you, you, and any, any good books that you can suggest to the audience, maybe something that you've read recently that really kind of, you know, made you think a lot. Uh, sad to say my eyes and I don't read and I don't, I don't do audio books. So actually I've transferred. I'm now really, uh, a surfer. I look at YouTube and I look at you and I look at those other platforms. <laughs> just and, and and actually YouTube is still still works for me. Yeah. It's a bizarre thing that I never thought I would subscribe to. But if I'm if I'm searching for something obscure, mm-hmm. I can pretty much always find it on YouTube. And then there'll be related items. And that will be things I've probably not heard before. See so, no- um it still works for me. Yeah, it's good. At least the al- the algorithm is working for you, which is good. Yeah. It's not. It's. I, I tell folks because of some of the the topics that I I tend to get into because I know this is kind of sad to say, but there's not a lot going on in the world of classic rock like there used to be. So a lot of the audience, um, you know, they tend to get bored, and so I tend to bring in politics or culture or something else just to 
for my own benefit because I get I get bored. I can only talk about the same things so many times and I do it every single day. Yeah. Um, some days it works and some days people are just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go surf the Internet, um, which is fine. But it, so what do you get when you go? What do your algorithms give you? When I go look for things, yeah. um, it depends. Like if I've been like after that Glenn Campbell song that I found with you and yeah. started pulling up all other duets, uh, sometimes with Glenn, sometimes with other people. And I, I didn't know it was the same record label, by the way, that you're on. Uh, yeah, Sur Surf Dog. That, yeah, it was Surf Dog. Yeah. And I'm That's like, these label. people, they must be, uh, they, they must be really good people, huh? They are good people. They're surfers. <laughs> Yeah, li like they, literally, yeah. They really are surfers, yeah. Which is, where is where is it based out of? Are they in, in the United Encinita, States? Encinita. Encinita, all right. Encinita, just by San Diego down there. And, they, and they're they're right on the beach. Their the office is on, but they go surfing. They're surfers. So. But they're real people. They're real good guys. So, and, it's that, and that's kind of what you, you, I mean, you're all about like, uh, what is the word? Authenticity these days. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to put up with a record label BS. Just sign me to your label and 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 make sure that the music gets out there because, you know, there's no, and I always say this, and I don't know if I've said it to you in a video, but there's really no support system for your music like on terrestrial radio and and so many others. I mean, I heard a, a song earlier. I can't remember who it was. And I'm like, this would this should be on the radio. It's, yeah. it's, but it's not going to be anywhere. I don't, is it the same in the UK? Will they play your stuff in the UK? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't listen to the radio. I have no idea. <laughs> I I make playlists I, and I listen to that. Or I I I I run. You know, I run a channel that's a tributary of Robin Minotti's channel. It's called Love Not Fear. Yes. Yes. You know that. Yeah. So that's and that's where I, that's where I and I have a couple of other buddies. Billy Smith uh, Junior is one who contributes to that. So we put up. I. I take stuff off of YouTube and post it on Love Not Fear, and he and we have a conversation. Right, he'll, send, he'll put stuff up. There's a kind of response. So, there's. Yeah. I mean, music is so great. Like that's like you can play cards with music in a way. Like have you seen this one? Yeah. Well, you think that's good. Look at this. Yeah. And it can go. It's true. really entertaining. You know? I mean, I. I mean, this might sounds like sound like fanboy stuff, but if it's something that you like, I'm going to be paying attention to it. I'm like, what Eric likes this. Sometimes you like <laughs> things, and I go, wow. I mean, because you know what? It's it's kind of like when you're a DJ and you play the same songs over and over again. Yeah. You get bored with those yeah. songs, and when the the producer, the the program director says, "Hey, here's a new song for you to play," and you're so excited because you're so tired of playing the same old stuff. I think you probably. Do you get bored with with just the same styles, and you want to kind of? If I'm see... just left on my own resources, yeah, I get it, it get. I mean, I just end up um, playing the same. And then for for a long time, I will not listen to it. Like right now, because I have to uh, concentrate on what I'm trying to learn to do again. Yes, um, I try not to listen to anything, but but there, something always sneaks through. Right, and my my kids, you know, they uh, the last thing they hit me with was McGee. Yeah. Or McGee. I can't remember. I yeah, saying, yeah. You you uh, he blew me away. And, you and sent that to me. To, yeah. You, and, and he's coming to London soon at the end of October. And I'm gonna go and see him if I can. But so I think yeah, I I do get bored, man. Of course I, yeah. I, I, but but it's that's a kind of veneer thing that you have to break. I have you have to break through that. Yeah, I go on I kind of go on binges like some people say I didn't know yeah. you liked I don't I didn't know you liked country and I go yeah I do but it sometimes I get I listen to it and then I I want to move back to blues or 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 rock or whatever but at R&B I love old R&B music from like the 60s and 70s that stuff is just um so good and yeah. you know the, the and people are forgetting you know they're memory holding a lot of this music, and they they don't understand how much how how great some of those singers were, and the the arrangements and the instrumentation yeah. and all of that stuff. Um, the group that you're talking about, by the way, is on that that dangerous platform that uh, the guy who is the CEO or whatever got he got uh, taken to jail in France, right? Yeah, that another free speech i mean this is another great example of free speech because apparently there are a lot of um... well the, you know the funny thing was that that government is using telegram 
they right. used they he was supposed to have dinner with the the, the president that, that so what day. are the, why did they arrest him then I, just to make a point i don't know did they just have they were scared i think they probably thought they thought they could intimidate him i think that guy the french guy is uh he's got quite a big ego i think and he thinks uh is that he's Macron, on a, a level with, with everybody else yeah so um his name is Duroff, right? Duroff yeah. is the guy who and oh, yeah. you had sent me a, a little meme about free every I mean, these guys who stand up for free speech. Now you got Elon's getting banned in certain countries. I think Brazil just banned. So you're going you're going to Brazil. I'm going down there. Yeah, I'm going down there. I don't know what they're gonna make of me. I mean, I haven't been there for maybe 15 years. So the political complexion is completely different to when I was there. And it was uh, back then it was you had to walk around with security because there was a kidnapping yeah. possibility. There was that was big business back then. Now I have no idea what I'm going into, but mm -hmm. I have a great crew. I mean, I'm it's good I'm, security. I feel like I'm safe. Anyway, spiritually, I think I'm safe. Uh, I don't know where I get that. Yeah. Uh, well, like, you sent the, me. What did you? You sent me this guy William McDowell. Yeah. Oh man, um, he's a gospel yeah. singer. Christian music singer just yeah. blew me out of my seat. I had, I had never heard of him until you see, again, this is why, you know, you got to hang out with Eric because you learn things. You get, you get good music <laughs> suggestions. And I said, you know, it's a crazy world. And you said something like, yeah, well, I'm listening to William McDowell. So I'm starting to feel a little bit better or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the healing. coping. Yeah. Good healing stuff. It yeah. is. Well, you need to fill your brain up with some good stuff. If you, if you digest too much of what they're, they're uh, trying to, brainwash you with eventually. i do I, I find that if i'm on if i'm on on the web or on, on youtube specifically and i'm trying to get a sampler of what today's activity is or what's gone down i mean there was the the one that got the last thing that got me uh wound up was candy Owens on piers morgan uh, and she just let rip and it was fantastic and that will keep me going for a couple of days <laughs> And then I think when I go back on, I think, you know what? You need to um, pull back. Yeah. Pull back. This isn't good for your no. kind of spiritual digestive system here. No, I've so been. Just go back to work. Go back to work and see what, see what you can produce, you know. Get some, get, I tell people, get some vitamin D. You know, if you yeah. can go, go outside for a little yeah, while. I mean, exactly. put, yeah. put, put this, that my phone is in here. Thank God. Sometimes it's always, it's like connected to me, but I hold it up and I go, I need to put this somewhere, get it out of my sight for a little while. Cause yeah. notifications and then you're, then you're sucked, you're sucked into the conversation <laughs> and then you answer and then they answer you back immediately. And then you feel like you have to answer them again right away. Or they think yeah. that maybe they're going to think you're mad at them. So <laughs> <laughs> it's i mean for you i mean it's good that you've got kind of layers of protection you know in between and you you just isolate yourself a little bit i mm. mean that's been your style for a while though or for, forever yeah i mean you that's, get that you, reputation that's the way I came in that's how it can, that's how it works for me i can just be anonymous in the corner of the room or in the you know uh without any fanfare i like it that way is it getting easier since you you're getting older? Is it is it easier? I mean, people oh, yeah. don't, don't don't care as much anymore because in it's your it's never like, been it's never been difficult. Yeah, it's not it's never been difficult. That's I mean. that's the you got that from JJ, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But I mean, I I have to think like when I think of you, I think of okay, Yardbirds, Blues Breakers. Oh, by the way, you you gave a a, a beautiful uh, speech about uh, John Mayall. I was very, very moving. And uh, you were doing like a lot of reflecting. Um, wh what do you think about when you think about that relationship and, and that that time of your life? Well, I was very uh, pliable at that point. I was very, um, it was difficult to convince me that music was a good place to be. I had been around a lot of toxic stuff and, uh, and I was ready to quit. And John... Um, bailed me out. John kind of uh, bailed me out of whatever prison I'd invented in my head. And uh, he introduced me to musical freedom, really. And mm -hmm. I, they were playing. And his his tenet was like, we don't play big places. We only play clubs. We're not looking to be 
more famous. We we just want to carry on the way we are because we can survive. We make profit and people have a good time. It was a, such a simple equation to walk into. And I could tell that he was happy to listen to me, happy to let me express myself. And I had, you know, when he, I hadn't really got in touch with him. I didn't, not deliberately, it's just that he was in California. I'm, I was in England for the last years of his life. And uh, and when I got the news, I couldn't contain uh, my emotions, you know, and I, I, and it made me, as you said, made me reflect on, on how big a, a step that was to allow myself to go back into the lion's den with, with music, with all of the, the opportunities that it, it holds, you know, for you to become famous or popular or fashionable or what, uh, and John was really my mentor. Uh, uh, and as I said in that, that came out, I couldn't stop it. I just yeah. got, went online and said, I think I, you need to say this because people don't realize how, how important he was. And, and, and in like JJ, all from the back seat, you know, all from the back of the, the back of the room, he made space for so many people to uh, enjoy music, enjoy music, which was hard to find. Not many people knew about. And that, so that whole blues boom, what you could say was like him, Graham Bond, a couple of other, few people, Alexis Corner. It, he was very, very important for the, for the, the history of what we do, rock, rock and roll, <laughs> R&B, yeah. Amazing, and, and he's another, and he's another one that the the good old boys club. They, I don't think they've even nominated one time. And I, 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 I said this like three or four years ago. I'm like, how, how is, is John? That a fact? You yeah. got it. I mean, John Mayall for just for influence, right? Look at yeah. everybody coming after him. Um, well, it's, it makes you question what their idea of rock and roll is. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what yeah. they, I don't know what they think it is because if it's not the blues and it's not. It's not relevant anyway. Yeah. I mean, we, is it a pop? Is it is it the pop pop music of fame or something? I don't know what it is. Well, it's it's like everything else. It's now they've they've diversified, and and a um, couple of people have made smart comments about this and said, you know, if if they're going to be honest, don't call it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Call it the Music Hall of Fame. That way, you can just put whatever you want in it but they're trying to like everything else eric they're trying to redefine reimagine they use these buzz phrases to try to make people think that you know we could just expand the meaning of everything and then nothing has any meaning at the end of it so i well, don't know I, I can empathize with with the fact that they want to survive <laughs> <laughs> they want to carry on. well they did this to themselves they, though what are they going to do close it i mean it's there is nothing where is it well they did they did it's this, abstract yeah they did this to themselves though when you look at it because they're they're the ones that decided you know 30 years ago whatever that they're going to start redefining everything and now in order to put things in their museum they have to redefine what the museum is um I mean, it, it's 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 a little bit maddening, but they should probably just you know take rock and roll out of it. But if you go there, you're going to see Chuck Berry, and you're going to see all of the original uh, pioneers. You mean the rock and roll? You talking about the rock and roll museum, the whole <laughs> yeah, the, thing, the, the the building? Yeah, the same, or just the, the whole. I mean, the again, because because recently, especially I would say the last five to ten years. They, I mean, the things that they nominate and you're thinking, OK, all of these other bands, these different artists that that haven't gotten in from even the, as far back as the 1960s. I talk about the Guess Who a lot, which is a, a great band. What about Blue Nile? No, no, no. no. I, not that I'm aware of. I mean, I have to <laughs> I'd have to Google, but I'm pretty sure there are things that haven't even been. Like JJ Kale, obviously, but there are a lot of other things where you scratch your head and you go, they haven't, they haven't even nominated this band. You know, no, the, well, they probably don't know about. It. That's the thing is they don't know. No, they they probably don't. And you know, we when you they but they always say their criteria is influence. Um, did it affect youth culture? Which I don't understand why it has to affect youth culture. But they're thinking rock and roll is you know, primarily a young person's interest, you know, and I, I don't, Nonsense. I don't, 
I don't abide by any of that. Is it good or is it not good? Is it is it uh, groundbreaking? Does does it move people? Yeah, you that's know? a good one. Does yeah. it move you? Does it move you? Does it does it give? Does it make you happy? Does it change your emotions? Does it uh, make you think? You know, like a guy like Roger Waters when he writes lyrics. You know, yeah. those lyrics alone, even without the music, well, let's that that'll make you think. But obviously, you have to put some good music to it. And he's good. He's good. Recites he recites well too. He's a <laughs> he's he's a little dark. He's a little dark. I mean, I I think I respect him a lot though because he's he's never wavered. You know, he's been like this. This is what's funny that they'll say, oh, you know, Clapton has changed. You know, he he he's getting involved in politics and this and that. But Roger has been this way. You can't fault Roger no. for for being. The way Rogers, he been. knows, he know he knows his history too. He's researched it. I mean, he's very, he's pretty oh. accurate, and he's well read. Yeah, he's he is, and you probably don't want to challenge him if you're like a CNN reporter because I think he's he's definitely oh, he going to good. He was great. Did you see him on <laughs> Piers Morgan? I, I didn't see him on Piers. I oh, saw him on this. See that. You I have saw to him see on that because he I will. starts talking to himself. He starts talking to himself to sort of reassure him. Yeah, he here he goes, here he goes. He don't talk loud, Roger. Don't talk loud because he only winds him up. You know what he's like then. You know, I mean, it's fantastic. And Piers is completely. He doesn't know. He can't deal with it. He can't actually get a toehold. Yeah, it's, it, pretty, it's worth it. Have, check it out. I I'm definitely I will look that up because he was on uh, over here with uh, Michael Smirconish, I think his name is on CNN. Yeah. And he was trying to explain how foreign policy works <clears throat> in Russia and uh, also in the Middle East. And Michael didn't didn't really know any of the things that Roger was saying. Yeah. And, and by the end of it, it, it just it just was OK. You've got to train people to know the history of things. And Roger says, you know, I read books. I know about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these reporters, I think they're just told, you know, this is what you say or. These are the topics that are permitted. It's on the surface. They stay on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's a soundbite kind of uh, philosophy. Is it, you know get a you know get a buzzword or stay on the surface and <clears throat> don't let them penetrate too deep. He said could people there are people like with when Tucker interviewed Vladimir uh, and yeah. got a history lesson. He, you could see it really pissed him off that he didn't know. No. He was completely um, overwhelmed, and I thought that was great, and he handled it very well. I think. Yeah, well, I think he's. I think Tucker is is a guy who will admit to you that he he's yeah. learning all the time. I mean, all the he, time, he yeah. Doesn't doesn't think that good. he's arrived. Great. These other guys pretend that they've arrived, and if you kind of you poke that shell, you try to go through it. That they, they the veneer you could see that uh, like the the emperor has no clothes, you know. But yeah. Um, you know, it, uh, it's good. You know, I it's funny because I know you've not done a lot of media, especially in recent years. You've chosen certain people. I remember when you spoke to Robin uh, back three or four years ago. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one of the first things I ever watched on his platform. And I'm like, wow, Eric is a good guy. <laughs> I said, Eric, yeah. Eric gets it. He understands things. And then then when I went back to doing what I do, I noticed that everybody was going after you. And I was like, well, wait a minute. No, Eric's Eric's one of the good guys. He's he's actually done his own research, done his own homework. And then at some point here in America, the 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 reporting uh, came around to saying things like, you know, you really shouldn't do your own research because, you know, you're just not yeah. qualified to do your own. Leave it to as you love to hear and I love to hear. Leave it to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> the experts eric the experts know better so we yeah. just for you know the last three or four years the experts they continue to be right and and even though that's not true but um at some point you just have to make fun of it and just move on you know yeah so any plans for 2025 Are you doing anything next year i think so yeah i think uh i'd like to do um if I get this, this album comes out, uh, meanwhile, will come out in October, that clears the tech, the deck for any kind of studio stuff. Then, then there's the Crossroads Festival DVD, which has been mixed and is ready to go out. There's three things that 
I need to uh, be released before I can feel like doing something new uh, in the studio, which I would love to do. Uh, but that won't happen until maybe the end of next year. And then I think we've got a tour in Japan in April. Wow. And I'll do, and I'll try, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm talking to some people about doing a concert in, in aid of Gaza. Mm -hmm. But not really, in a, not for aid, not for money, not for, n n not for a ceasefire, just for, just to remind people that it's still going on. Yeah. Uh, because I think what will happen, uh, what seems to be likely is that, although I, I noticed the kids are, are back on the campuses protesting, which is fantastic. And, uh, <laughs> and maybe, you know, just that, it, it, if that can if they can perpetuate that, that'll do wonderful things. But um, I, I myself, I, I'm not sure what I can do without getting uh, mowed down. So I'm yeah. going to be, I'm, I'll be looking at some way of playing for those people, uh, the the people that are suffering, um, and 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 survive at the same time. Try to do it without provoking too much mm -hmm. anger. So right. that uh, that's that's something I'm I'm thinking about and trying to construct. So I'm not retiring. Uh, it doesn't look like that's uh, an option, really. Yeah. Wow. So um, all the the media experts over here, remember, I, I'd love to talk about this because they were hoping, they were saying a few years ago, and I think I've said this to you before that uh, they were wondering how come you just don't have that dignified retirement that that they're waiting for. So uh, I don't have uh, uh, dignity is uh, not something I'm <laughs> loaded to the guns with. <laughs> I'm, All I'm, right. Uh, well, you know, a loose cannon. Yeah. Okay. I think on that note, we'll, we'll wrap things up. Is there okay. anything, anything else you want to talk about before we go? Uh, no, I think that's it. I'm sure I'll think of something after we put down the phones. Yeah. But, um, um, I do want to mention a couple of things uh, before I go on this particular video. So this channel is constantly under like what I call shadow banning yeah. um, is censorship to some degree. And it's it has to do with algorithms and it has to do with the fact that I don't just like this conversation, I think, demonstrates the fact that I don't just talk about music alone, that I integrate some other things into it. So if you like the content, if you like the interviews with Eric, and I've, I've done a few of them now, which is crazy to think about, um, please subscribe to the channel um, and like the video and share the video. And please, you know, support Eric when he's out there as well. Um, and the friends of this uh, channel, like Modern Retro Radio, uh, they've played all of the new Eric Clapton music that's come out in the last, I don't know how many years, but they're always on it. Um, so I appreciate them. Eric, I appreciate you. Great. And, and thank you so much for doing this. It's a big boost to me in the channel. And uh, safe travels out on the road. Thank you, David. My pleasure. It's great to see you.